Thank you and good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Peel Regional Police Facility. As Canada's uh, third or fourth largest municipal police service, Peel Regional Police continues to serve about 1.4, 1.5 million people in this remarkably diverse community. We know that this regionally, statistically, from a crime severity index, is still one of the safest regional municipalities in Canada. However, that being said, the confluence of factors which cause problems in our communities are ones that require responses that are sometimes above and beyond our capability of often deploying officers and investigators to. Violent crimes and violent individuals and the nature of these incidents require a significant amount of resources and the skills to investigate them. And behind us we have some of the 3,000 members of our organization that daily intend to mitigate risk in our community. Public safety is number one for Peel Regional Police Service. Today's provincial funding will help towards our comprehensive response to mitigating and addressing violent crime, specifically gun and gang crime in our community. These type of crimes are a broad confluence of issues stemming from criminal and social disorder. So having to tackle these issues requires a multiple pronged approach in order to be effective. In addition to complex investigations and significant frontline efforts, mitigating risk, prevention and social development aid the protection of our communities. And the outcomes of this ensure that the public feels safe and supports their sense of well-being while having the confidence that we are impacting street gangs in these communities. There are many, many public issues that are common across the communities within our region and across boundaries. This government funding will afford us the opportunity to continue to move forward with complicated investigations which demand many, many hours investigating violent crimes while continuing to implement community safety issues and prevention issues in various initiatives. Working together with all levels of government is critical to both preventing and solving violent crimes. Public safety and this community's well-being are number one priority for Peel Regional Police. I'd like to thank the provincial government and the Premier and the Solicitor General, Attorney General for their efforts to continue to support us. We look forward to enhancing our response to this serious risk in our community to further our vision here in Peel as being a safer community together. Now I'd like to introduce the Attorney General of Ontario, the Honourable Doug Downey. Thank you, Chief Nish, and I want to take this chance to congratulate you on your appointment as Chief, to commend the work of the outstanding team that you lead here at Peel Regional Police Service. As a former Guns and Gangs Officer in Halton, you bring a very sophisticated understanding of the growing and complex threat posed by guns and gangs and the violence in our communities. Gangs are finding new ways, new ways to recruit members, new ways to, at to attempt to avoid detection. It's a real problem with real victims, and it shatters lives, it robs families and it communities of the chances they deserve to grow. While the problem is growing, it's growing in scope and complexity, it's our job as justice partners to fix it. That's why we've come together here in Peel and in communities across Ontario to escalate the local fight against gangs who prey on young and vulnerable people. Across our government, we are determined to keep our families and communities safe by supporting local police and specialized prosecutors. One example is the intensive bail review teams that we've put in place, uh, the intensive firearm bail review teams we know will make a real difference for the safety for everyone in our communities and everyone who calls this region home. We're, of course, led this critical work by our Premier who has immediately recognized the urgency of the issue and who has pressed the Ontario government, all of us, to bring real concerted action. He moved right away to give frontline police officers more tools to crack down on organized crime and gun violence and gangs right across the province. For Ontario to prosper and grow, people must feel safe. They must feel safe in their homes, in the streets, local businesses must feel safe, it must feel safe at local arenas, at our parks, in all of our community spaces. The Premier has been crystal clear, crystal clear about this. This is his priority. 
On that note, I know I speak on behalf of Solicitor General Jones when I say we're thrilled to welcome him here today to share his vision for fixing this growing and complex problem that threatens the future of our families and our communities. Premier. Thanks. Well, thank, thank you very much, uh, Attorney General Downey. And it's a real, real pleasure to be here. Uh, Chief Nish, what a, what a great job you're doing. And, and uh, I'll tell you, we, we support you a thousand percent. It's great to be here with Mayor Brown and Mayor Crombie and Chair, uh, Chair uh, Nando. Yeah, yeah, I know I was going to say <laughs> Chair Nando and uh, Solicitor General. Just got to run through a couple MPPs, a uh, team of all-stars, MPP Rudy Cazetto, Nina Tangri, Sharif Sabawe, and Natalia Kusindova. You know, there's, there's no secret. I absolutely love our police officers, and I'm proud to say three out of my four daughters are with police uh, officers, so there's my bias right there as well. I have so much respect for what you do, your long hours that you put in every single day, and you put your lives on the line for each and every one of us every single day. You're always looking out for us, so our government is doing everything we can to make sure we look out for you. And make sure you have the tools and the resources you need to do your job and keep us safe. Today, we're bringing the fight against guns and gangs in Peel Region. We're investing over $20 million to strengthen community policing, to prosecute even more offenders involved in firearm offenses. This money will help our police officers work directly with the members of the public to improve safety. It will also allow our officers to target organized crime at its source and work with prosecutors to lock up the criminals. Today, this investment is part of our government's $195 million commitment to community policing across our province and part of our provincial-wide strategy to fight guns and gangs, to bring violent criminals to justice and make sure we keep our streets safe. I know these initiatives are top priority for the chief. It's something he's been working on for many years including his time over at Halton Police. Too many of our young people in Peel Region are being recruited and preyed on by these gangs. So we need to intervene early to stop the violence. Today's funding will give police additional support to go after the dangerous criminals and put them behind bars where they belong. And a message to the criminals that are watching us now, we're coming for you. We're going to find you, we're going to catch you, and we're going to lock you up for a long time. I'm going to hand it over to our, our great uh, Solicitor General. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here in Peel Region today. From day one, our government has committed to providing our police services, frontline support agencies, and the communities with the resources you need to combat crime, support victims, and bring criminals to justice. Since coming to office in June 2018, we have made significant investments into community safety and victim supports in Peel Region. This includes funding to put more police officers on the street through the Ontario Safer Communities 1,000 Officers Partnership Program, Keeping streets safer from impaired driving by enhanced regular ride spot check activities. Protecting children from online exploitation through the provincial strategy to protect children from sexual abuse and exploitation on the internet grant. In addition, $71.8 million has been invested to enhance security and expand and modernize services to the public at the Brampton Courthouse. Thank you, Attorney General Downing. We continue to work to strengthen public safety. Some of the community safety issues we face today are radically different from the ones we faced even a decade ago. Addressing gun and gang violence remains a top priority for our government, which is why we launched a comprehensive guns, gangs and violence reduction strategy. Our government has made a commitment to come down hard on gun and gang violence. 
We also know that some of the best solutions to prevent crime and keep our communities safe are developed locally, which is why our government will invest $195 million over three years to help police address community-based public safety issues through the province's Community Safety and Policing Grant Program. $181 million from this program, or over 90% of our investment, will go towards tackling local priorities as identified by police services and their community partners. After all, these are the people who know best what they need to support the safety and well-being of our communities. Today, I am pleased to announce that Peel Region Police will receive approximately $17 million through the Community Safety and Policing Grant to support this community mobilization program. Ontarians must feel secure in their homes and safe in our streets and community spaces. The Community Mobilization Program does an excellent job improving the lives of res residents by preventing and combating crime through strong community policing. Gun and gang violence is a complex community safety issue that we must fight with every tool at our disposal. In addition to funding community mobilization programs, Peel Regional Police has been also been allocated $1.5 million over three years to address violent crime in Peel Region as part of Ontario's Guns, Gangs and Violence Reduction Strategy. Today's investment builds on the approximately $1.5 million we are already investing in partnership with the federal government to combat gun and gang violence across our province. This is also includes approximately $1.9 million that Ontario has committed to create an intensive firearm bail team in Peel to focus on bail hearings and proceedings from firearms offences in the GTA beginning in 2020. Crime, and especially gun and gang violence, does not respect municipal boundaries. And gun and gang violence is interconnected so that many other issues are critical when we uh, look at how we can end it. One example is human trafficking. In Canada, 60% of human trafficking happens right here in Ontario. We know its proceeds help fund criminal acti activity including guns and gangs, and it's a vicious cycle that needs to stop. Which is why it is so important to put resources directly into the hands of local police services across Ontario. Frontline officers are the experts in maintaining public safety and are primary partners in keeping Ontario communities safe. The Community Safety and Policing Grant Program is another way our government is working hand in hand with the community to get tougher on criminals and smarter on preventing crime. So I'm now pleased to introduce the chair of the region of Peel. Nando, can you join me at the podium? Sylvia, thank you. Uh, Sylvia, thank you very much. Premier, what a privilege to have you here in the region of Peel. Um, Solicitor General, Attorney General, and I've got some colleagues here from the board as well. Of course, my two mayors that are going to speak a little bit later, but I do want to acknowledge my other colleagues on the Police Services Board, Mr. Zatia, Boughton, Chatha, and Howe that are here as well. well. What a great day for Peel and what a great day for the Police Services Board. You know, it's an honour to welcome Premier Ford here. When he and I first spoke at AMO, we're going back several months now, um, you've got to appreciate the problems and the challenges this government had. Uh, I'm reminded, Premier, as someone that's nonpartisan. I've never been a member of a political party in my life, in my fourth decade of politics. Uh, you got to appreciate the situation people find themselves in. And when Peter Bethlen Falvey wrote that great treatise in the paper that says the government spends 40 million more a day than comes in, well, that's a challenge for all of us. And what I said to the Premier was, we're here to help you work against that challenge, but we've got to do it together. And I've got to tell you, in the region of Peel, Premier, in the last little while, we've had meetings with your Solicitor General to talk about this funding. I tell you, Sylvia Jones is the duck on the water. It's an analogy I use with the Chief all the time. I think she's just calmly going about her business, but those little flippers under the water are moving or moving, and look what you've brought us today. 
So you've been a real champion for Peel, and we're very, very grateful to you. We've met with all sorts of ministers right here in Peel. I just recently, Premier, in our offices, Mr. Sakaria, Minister Sakaria, to try and get rid of some red tape in government. We met with Minister Tobolo, all the work that he's doing on the health file, the mental health file. We had Minister Clark here several times talking about making government leaner and more efficient. And most recently, Jim Pine to talk about the health care services and what we can do. So, Premier, I this great opportunity that I can thank you for listening. We still have a lot of work to do. Doesn't mean we're always going to agree, but at least we listen, we talk, we work together, and marvelous announcements like this come from it. So, Premier, thank you very much for being on the right track. We are grateful to you on behalf of the Region of Peel and the Police Services Board, and we have much more work to do. And I want to hear some applause. This was a big announcement, a lot of money. Thank you. Well, thank you, Nando, for your enthusiasm. Uh, uh, to the Premier, to the Solicitor General, to the Attorney General, thank you so much for this announcement, this much-needed investment uh, in public safety in Peel Region. One of the first uh, tragedies that I saw after taking over as Mayor in Brampton was November 13th. Uh, Jason Remikishan, um was shot and killed on the 410. Bullets do not differentiate between innocent bystanders and gang members. In this tragic case, they got their intended target a week later. Gang activity is a real problem throughout the GTA. And I want to thank the Premier, I want to thank this government for recognizing this challenge. Uh, you know, we have, we have the best police, among the best, best, best police officers in the country. We've got a Chief uh, Nishan who is brilliant and dedicated, a workaholic towards keeping our community safe but they need the resources to do their job. I'm a big believer that with the resources, they can do wonders in keeping us safe, giving us that peace of mind. You can have everything else in your community, but if you don't have peace of mind, it's, um, it's a giant hole. And if we give them the tools to do their job, they will do so honorably. And this, this is an important step towards public safety. And I want to personally thank the Premier for hearing our call. I think we've been asking about gun and gang funding repeatedly over the last year, and it's so um, reassuring to know we have a provincial government that has our back on this battle against gun and gang activity. Because it's not a Toronto problem, it's not a Brampton problem, it's a GTA-wide problem. <laughs> I have an interesting lens as, as mayor of Brampton, as a member of the Police Services Board, on, on this challenge. And what I have learned over the last year is never underestimate how sophisticated gangs are. Never underestimate how they appreciate where there is diminished resources, where there is a more, unfortunately, convenient place to engage in this activity. Well, with this help, you're helping ensure that Peel Region is not a convenient place for another targeted shooting. You're ensuring that we have the tools to fight this insidious activity. So on behalf of the residents of Brampton, Premier, I just want to say thank you for this investment. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and I apologize in advance for my voice, but I do want to thank Premier Ford, Solicitor General Jones, and Attorney General Downey to Mississauga and thank them for reaffirming their commitment to enhancing community safety right here in Mississauga. Welcome to Mississauga, by the way, and of course to Peel. As elected officials, it is our job to ensure that the police have the, the resources they need to keep our city and, of course, our officers safe. And as a member of the Peel Police Board and as the mayor of the sixth largest city, I see some real challenges that Chief Nish and Peel Police deal with on a daily basis. It is not an easy job. Our officers put their lives on the line to keep our city safe, and I want to thank them for their courage and their bravery. The reality is that we face some real challenges here in Peel when it comes to curbing guns and gang violence. Challenges that over the course of the next year and beyond will require all levels of government to step up and to take action. And I want to thank the province for doing just that and recognizing that we cannot do this alone and that there is still much more to do. 
69% of the guns seized here in Peel were illegal and have been smuggled in from across the border in the United States. We are seeing more innocent teens like Jonathan Davis getting caught in the crossfire and losing their lives as a result of guns and gang violence. We are seeing more semi-automatic weapons and as a result more rounds being discharged in our streets. We know that gangs don't respect postal codes. And over the past year, we have seen more violent crimes spilling over our borders, including along the 400 series highways. And in response, we've seen our police forces, Peel, Toronto, York and beyond, working together like never before to get criminals off the streets. By no means am I trying to pick a grim, paint a grim picture here. Solvency rates amongst Peel police are amongst the highest in the country. And when you look at the statistics, Mississauga remains one of the safest cities in Canada, and we're going to keep it that way. But we can't ignore the spike in gang violence, the evolving complexity of many of the investigations, and the changing landscape of, ga of gang violence, drugs, and of course, human trafficking. From how these organized crime and drug rings operate to the technology that they use to ev evade police and avoid detection. I know Mayor Brown joins me in calling for targeted investments into a guns and gangs unit for Peel, similar to that of the growing urban cities like Toronto and Ottawa. This is something, <clears throat> this is something we don't just want, but we need here in Peel. So once again, we do thank the province for investing in Peel Police, their dedication for keeping the residents of Mississauga and Brampton safe, and we look forward to continuing to work with you to keep our city streets safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, at this point, uh, it's just my pleasure to invite uh, the Premier uh, here to join me. At, we'll be opening the floor to questions from the media uh, that we can uh, begin with. And I think we're beginning over here. First question is for the Premier and for you, Chief. Um, and that is, uh, this money, this investment is into community safety. Uh, but there was a, a mention of 69% of the firearms being smuggled in. The federal government is only putting in $50 million over five years to CBSA. Do we need to have a bigger investment in the border than we currently have right now, if that's the, the main source of the guns causing the problems? Well, I, I think we should. I think it's a good start, but we need to invest in our border security. They're, they're absolute champs down there. They're the first line of defense, and uh, we, we support them. Uh, a thousand percent, and I'll be uh, speaking to the Prime Minister about that. And uh, I know, I know, there's been a, a lot of talk about banning uh, guns, handguns. Uh, you know, criminals, gangbangers don't go up to register their guns. So uh, I disagree with that. I I believe we should be putting the money into our great men and women standing behind me, and give them the resources that they need to go after these punks that have the guns that are you know, threatening the, the law-abiding people of appeal, and uh, we're going to get them. We will catch them. We're going to throw them away. What the federal government should be doing is start focusing on, on bail reform. Uh, the judges and the JPs have to toughen up. Uh, what's frustrating to not only uh, ourselves, but the, the police out there, that they catch a gangbanger, and all of a sudden, the next day, he's out on the street or the next two days. We got to throw the key away with these guys and, and send a message that we aren't going to tolerate uh, them running around shooting up the streets. Chief, anything on that? And uh, just to echo, echo the Premier's uh, comments is that, uh, you know, we as police chiefs in Ontario would welcome any opportunity to mitigate risk. We do know that a large amount of the firearms that are entering our country come illegally or sometimes are acquired from, from the U.S. or partners in the South. The ability for us to interact and obtain information and intelligence from agencies south of the border or at the border will certainly enhance our capacity to mitigate the risk or interdict 
or investigate them. And as you can imagine, agencies that are in the law enforcement spectrum are all resource challenged. Any assistance we can get to ensure that there's connectivity in the flow of information, uh, I think it would resonate with any chief in the GTA, most certainly, or anybody along a 400 series highway, that we would appreciate uh, that element to it. To follow up on a different matter, uh, Premier, uh, when I asked you in December in Ottawa about uh, concerns on the LRT, um, you said you were fine with it. The system still doesn't work, doors don't open. We now find out that uh, there's flat spots on wheels, mm -hmm. uh, and this is the same train system that is being purchased for both the Finch Line and the Huron Ontario. So, do you still have faith in Ottawa's system, especially as it comes down here, and if Mayor Crombie wants to jump in on flat wheels as well? Well, we're, we're going to have a different uh, crew out there putting together, learn by the mistakes, and, and I've been in close contact with the Mayor of Ottawa. Matter of fact, I'll be there in a few hours. I'll be uh, heading over to Ottawa, and uh, we, we're, we, I think I have confidence in the Mayor up there. As a matter of fact, I have 100% confidence he's going to fix the, the problem. Uh, we put a tremendous amount of money towards the Ottawa Transit, and uh, we, we support them. They're, they're going to get through it. They're going to uh, figure out the bumps on the road, excuse the pun, but uh, they'll get it taken care of. I'm pretty confident. Now, let me just say that I'm very grateful for the over $2 billion in capital investment um, in our here Ontario LRT, and we look forward to it breaking ground later this spring, and I'm sure by then whatever kinks are in the system will have been worked out. So thank you. Okay, uh, good morning, Premier. Um, earlier uh, this week, the Toronto Star um, revealed that your government had appointed a Toronto police officer to the Ontario uh, to the board of the Ontario Human Rights Commission. Uh, the question swirling around that is uh, the, the Human Rights Commission is investigating Toronto police for systemic racism. So how is it appropriate to have a Toronto police officer on the board of that body when, when that is happening? Isn't that a conflict of interest? Well, I'll let the uh, Attorney General answer that. But again, I just want to reinforce, I support our police. I support the appointment that the Attorney General did. And uh, if anyone on any board, as each and every one of you know, I've sat on boards, if there's a conflict, they remove themselves for that, that one conflict. But uh, two phenomenal candidates and uh, the police officer that's serving, uh, top notch. Can't ask for uh, a better police officer than uh, what the Attorney General appointed. Oh, what the Attorney General. Thank you, Premier. And, and if you look at uh, his record, he is a phenomenal appointment. Uh, we went through all the, the appropriate process to do the conflict checks, to do the background, uh, to, to do all that sort of thing. So I have full confidence uh, that the board will function as it always has. And as the Premier mentioned, if there's a, an issue that comes up, of course, they'll deal with the, any conflict like they would anybody else. On another matter, um, as a follow-up, um, this week it, it also came out that there's a proposal to let building and, uh, to let developers hire uh, a new c class of architect and, and um, engineer called a certified professional as a building inspector. So how is it, how do you see that working? Because there's a lot of criticism that that is ripe for con conflict of interest too. If a, if a developer can pay to have basically his or her own building inspector. Well, the reason we're doing that, there's such a backlog in all, all the cities on, on inspectors. An inspector is going to be held accountable. It's like getting an engineer stamp uh, on, a, on a diagram. Uh, they're going to be held accountable. We, we believe and uh, we trust that these are professionals. And uh, at any given time, no matter what city they're building in, the inspectors can come in and, and uh, inspect it. But we have to get uh, development moving. and in the GTA and, and along with Toronto. Uh, the problem we're, we're facing right now is supply and demand. Uh, there, there's not enough uh, supply and there's an over demand. Uh, the prices have gone up. We need to you know, make sure that we give the opportunity for the developers to, to get permits and start, uh, start building homes, affordable homes. Now I've always said I'm, I'm big into affordable housing, but you know what I'm even bigger in? Affordable ownership. You know, I encourage the, both the mayors there to look at affordable ownership because, as you know, if, if someone owns a house, they're going to take care of it a lot better than if it's just handed uh, over to them. So we're going to be working with the region and uh, right across Ontario for uh, affordable ownership. Okay, thank you. 
Hi, Mr. Premier. Um, we've been writing about the story of Devin Freeman. He's a, he was a 16-year-old Indigenous youth um, who committed suicide while he was in the child welfare system. His body wasn't found for seven months. Um, and, I, and, and your government is facing calls to do, uh, to do um, mandatory inquests for any children who die in care. I wonder if you support that and why. Uh, if, We're, we're a collaborative team, and so we talk about a lot of things all the time. And uh, no, I, I don't think a decision has been made on that, and, and certainly we're looking at that request. We'll, we'll have to uh, uh, bring in also uh, some of the other ministers who will have input in terms of their portfolios. Um, and right now we are doing a, a consultation. Uh, uh, Parliamentary Assistant Jeremy Roberts is, is out leading a consultation in terms of uh, some of the, the systems that are interacting for our children to make sure that we're doing things the best way possible. So we'll have to get back to you in terms of why would why, why why can't you commit to making this mandatory though? Isn't this yeah. a pressing public issue? It, it's an absolute tragedy and, and we have a process where we talk among our colleagues. I don't walk up to a mic and just make decisions. Thank you. Hi there, Premier. Hi. Um, on a transit, there was a community meeting last night, the first one uh, for the Ontario line. Uh, and uh, some community members, um, they uh, had some concerns about the line going above ground. Uh, so um, why should the Ontario line be at grade um, through, a, through higher density neighborhoods uh, where, uh, where, for the, um, where, where, uh, where for the light rail line uh, in central Etobicoke uh, that will be below ground uh, going through lower density neighborhoods? Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to correct you. There's uh, two and a half kilometers out in Etobicoke is going above grade. Uh, and I, I understand. Uh, you know, I've been preaching subways. And my brother's been preaching subways for 10 years. And uh, that's why we have community consultation. I know exactly where you're talking about. They're going to consult with uh, Metrolinx and TTC, and hopefully we can we can support them with an idea. But that's the reason the consultation's out there. So we'll listen to the people and do everything we can. But we also have to work within the parameters on the budget that we we have. And uh, again, if it was up to me, I'd, I'd try to bury every every subway under the ground. Uh, but sometimes it's not realistic or not feasible. But uh, Ontario Line is going to be an incredible line. It's our crown jewel. It's going to connect the city uh, right up from the Science Centre down to uh, the Exhibition Stadium, Ontario Place. So it's, uh, we're, we're proud of that line, but we're going to make sure that uh, communities, uh, it benefits them and doesn't hurt them. But I, I fully, fully understand above grade uh, in that community, and, and we'll be looking at uh, a few items there. Um, on a separate transit subject, uh, yeah. there's a, a recent report about uh, Metrolinx uh, um, and them uh, 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 and uh, and and uh, how they are looking at uh, um, how they are looking at uh, paid parking uh, and, and so on. Um, do you support any level of paid parking uh, for GO stations throughout the uh, region? Well, again, I, I know there's a there's a pass. Uh, what do you get? It costs a hundred dollars, and you get reserved parking. So they already have paid parking. But I haven't had an opportunity to sit down with Metrolinx, but I'd be more than happy to sit down with them. I, I don't like taxing anyone. You know that, and that's you know a service charge, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we'll do everything we can to to keep the cost as low as possible. Morning, Premier. Um, your government reached a deal with Ottawa for the French language university. Yeah. Minister Jolie in Ottawa said it was hard, it was exhausting negotiating with your government. What's your response? Isn't, isn't that great that we got that French university going? I think it's such a positive news story and I'm, I'm so happy for the work uh, Minister Mulroney did along with her federal colleagues. And we couldn't have done that, by the way, I gotta give credit where credit's due. We could have done this without the support of the federal government. So we worked hand in hand. Uh, I've talked to the Prime Minister directly about this un university, and uh, we're, we're doing a great thing. So we're, we're excited about it. But do you worry for future deals with Ottawa since this one was very hard and painful? No, I, I think it was, it was great. It has to be tough negotiating on, on all sides. 
The great thing is we're working together. Just, just like uh, the people expect us to work together. They expect us to work with our municipal leaders. They expect us to work with our federal leaders. And that's exactly what this government's doing. Uh, we're collaborating with all levels of government. And uh, I can't wait until that university gets built and we're out there uh, cutting the ribbon. I got to brush up on my French lessons a little bit. <laughs> Cynthia. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, and my question's actually for the Attorney General. Oh. It's in regards to the ruling by the Ontario Court of Appeal that uh, could possibly overturn hundreds of convictions. What is a provincial estimate of what it's going to cost us? And what are the provincial plans to handle the burden on a system that's way overburdened already? So un unfortunately, because it just was released yesterday, we're, we're in a period where I can't comment on the file. Um, we're, we're reviewing the decision, uh, and we're, we're going to, we can talk about the system writ large and some of the challenges we have there, um, but I can't talk about this one in particular until some time passes. And so how did this happen? Who's to blame? We heard from analysts yesterday saying there's enough blame to go around. Is it the federal government, the wording of the legislation wasn't good enough, or did the province jump the ball? and order the Crown attorneys to go under this new legislation for files that were already in the system. That would make me talk about the case that was just released yesterday. Unfortunately, I'm constrained and I can't. Now it's my turn, Premier. Oh. <laughs> Good morning. How are you doing, Cynthia? Good. How are you today? Good. ETFO just minutes ago released another announcement that they're going to hold another day of one-day rotating strikes next week. They're happening every day. How long are you going to let this continue? Well, we're working hard to get the deal, and uh, Minister Lecce is doing a great job. And you know something, I, a message to the teachers, I, I support you. We have some great, hard-working men and women that show up every day. I totally disagree with the head of the union. You know, we're treating them fairly. Uh, we aren't budging on that 1%, uh, all the OPS, because of the, the financial disaster the previous government left us in. Uh, they've agreed. Uh, QP signed a, a deal along with a, another union. Why should there be two rules? One for the head of the teachers' union and another rule for, for everyone else. We all have to tighten up our belt. Uh, and I always look at things. Are we treating uh, the front line? Uh, teachers, which which I support all frontline uh, people working, are we treating them fairly? And the answer is yes. You know, the average wage is uh, 98000 That's the average, second highest in the entire country. 80% of the entire budget uh, goes to their compensation, goes to their pensions that we're all pitching in, paying for, uh, along with the benefits. Uh, and do you know many teachers I've talked to that, that just want this to be over, they're happy, uh, they want to get back in the classroom. I hear that over and over. And the other, other thing I hear, Cynthia, and I, I've been up to, in the last three, four days, I was down to Windsor, Essex, uh, all through Toronto, up in Huntsville and, and Perry Sound. There isn't a place I'm going. Even this morning, I stopped over at a gas station. People coming in, do not budge with those teachers. And I'm, I'm being frank, I'm hearing strangers everywhere, do not budge. Everyone loves our teachers. They're being treated fairly. They have to make sure they put the priority of the kids and stay in the classroom. That's all we're asking. But uh, we're going to get a deal done. We're going to get a deal, and we're going to keep, uh, keep the, the pressure on, let's say. But uh, we aren't budging for the 1%. And uh, hopefully they're, they're going to come to their senses, the union, not the teachers, the union. So I think what's frustrating for many is that there haven't been talks in weeks. No talks are scheduled. Both sides tell me, well, it's the other person's fault, that, or the other side's fault that there haven't been talks. Why don't you just order them to sit down at the table, lock the door, and make them hash it out? We, uh, we're there. Uh, we're at the table. And, uh, but no talks you know, are we happening gave, We here. gave some concessions. We gave concessions on, on the online learning, uh, a few other areas that we gave concessions. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get it done, but uh, there's only so long my patience can last with the, with the head of the unions. So stay well, tuned. What I'm, does I'm, that mean? I'm, I'm, that Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia I'm, trying to be, I'm trying to be fair 
with, with these people. And that's what I look at every negotiation. We have struck so many great deals throughout the province, and it's the same union that has fought with every government, every premier for 30 years. And people see it, and they're, I'll be frank, they're, they're getting fed up. Not with the teachers, but the head of the unions. And, and I'll be very frank, a lot of teachers are fed up with the unions. When I talk to them, they said, oh, we're terrified of our unions. You gotta be kidding me, you're terrified? I hear it over and over and over again that the teachers wanna put this behind us, they're happy, go in the classroom and teach our kids. That's a priority. Next question. Hi, uh, Premier Ford, Chief Nish. Um, there's a lot of critics saying that pouring more money into policing instead of addressing the underlying social causes of increased gun and gang violence will not actually help the problem. Uh, do you plan on addressing such social issues or providing funding for them? So I think uh, just to clarify, uh, you know, for example, today we're talking about gun and gang violence. And the gun violence, we've always said, and many chiefs will say, is a symptom of the root causes that lead to it. You know, we know that there are other criminal activities, social disorder, whatever it might be. There is an emergent pressure for my officers in order to respond to the day-to-day -day needs. There are shootings that are happening, you know, you know, regularly that our frontline people need to respond to. That environment needs to end. So there will always, always be a need and a demand for frontline investigative enforcement activities. At, you know, today's funding will go towards that. But as you've heard the uh, Solicitor General speak to, there's a significant amount of investment in our public safety space on mitigating risk. And it, policing has evolved. So you know, there have been critics. However, I bet you you can't find a chief now this day that doesn't believe that it can't there has to be concurrent activities to mitigate risk. And uh, as you've heard, we are continuing to do multiple activities in the sphere of prevention, social development. You know, there are many communities that need to be invested in from a sense of building youth, supporting parents. Uh, there's a youth exiting care, mental health addictions, let alone the human trafficking. And they all have to happen concurrently. And I think you, you know, if you stepped into our, our organization, you would see that we have many officers and some of this funding is going to help in those other streams to build resiliency in communities. So, you know, the criticism probably is rooted in, in an age old historic approach to just enforcement only. We know that that is a priority. We'd have to deal with the day to day needs, stop the shootings. However, we need to find a way upstream to mitigate that risk. And I'm confident that, you know, we're doing that here. Many organizations are, and this funding will go to assist us in that regard. Thanks. Um, so uh, the chief articulated it very well, but I want to reinforce, you know, in Ontario today, 40% of the calls that our police are receiving are directly related to mental health. Our government has made a commitment to deal with some of the upstream issues, but in the meantime, we have gangs who are operating across Ontario who don't have any regard for innocent lives and innocent people. When we deal with um, individuals who are in parks, who are in community centers, who don't feel safe, there is a responsibility for all of us, which frankly, I think is why you see the region, the mayors, the police, and our province working together on this very critical issue. Um, I'm wondering if I can ask Mayor Brown a quick question. Um, Mayor Brown, uh, a little while ago, uh, you said that gang violence was coming from Toronto and sort of leaking into Peel Region. Do you still stand by that statement? I think the gang activity is a GTA-wide problem. I think it started in Toronto but has now spread throughout the, the, the GTA. Um, and what I've uh, certainly been briefed on is that the gangs have become more sophisticated where they may have originated in Toronto, they now have membership that is throughout uh, the GTA and it's why um, <laughs> this funding was so important. Uh, um, one of our concerns originally was that gun and gang funding um, was directed to Toronto. I think this is impressive. The government's recognized uh, um, this is a GTA-wide problem. We need funding to address it. The police need to have the resources, and this is an important step towards that. Thank you. We have time for two more. Premier, I just wanted to ask you a quick question following up on Cynthia's uh, uh, last question there. Uh, you're, you alluded to your patience with the teachers. I'm wondering if that means you're actively considering back-to-work legislation at this point. Not, not at this point, but we want to get a deal. Um, we're working hard. Uh, the, the Minister Lecce is doing an absolute incredible job. He's an incredible communicator, as I've said over and over again. 
He's uh, talking to parent groups uh, across the province, not just in Toronto. But uh, we need to get the kids in the classroom where they belong, a safe environment. Uh, you know, they, they have to respect. I have a great deal of respect for the frontline, hardworking men and women teaching our uh, students. But they have to, the unions have to respect the taxpayer. They have to respect the students and keep them in the class. Um, but we're, we're going to get a deal. We will get a deal. On another topic, uh, almost a year ago to the day, you warned that there was a very real risk of a carbon tax recession that obviously hasn't come to bear at this point. The, the carbon backstop has been in place since the spring. Ontario's economy to your own attestation is booming. I'm wondering if you regret making that comment. Oh, not, not at all. Um, you know, when, when people go out and they're paying more for gas, uh, more for food, more for everything, the carbon tax is an absolute terrible tax. It's a tax grab. And the reason the economy is booming is because of our government. We created the environment for 296,000 new jobs. Check back in the records. I, I, I can't remember the last time a government, we did, I think it was back in uh, the mid-1980s, no government in a year has created close to 300,000 jobs, lowered taxes, put more money back into people's pockets, more money into uh, businesses uh, to thrive and prosper and grow. Our economy is on fire. 76% of all new jobs in this country was created here in Ontario. Though that's phenomenal and it all has to do with making sure that we cut red tape, regulations, lower taxes, when you put money back into pe people's pocket, they're going to go out and they're going to spend it on places that they might otherwise not be able to. You put it into companies' pockets, they're going to reinvest it into equipment, into technology, into people. The economy is thriving. Our biggest problem is we're short about 250,000 people to fill the jobs, skilled and unskilled. So we, we have to make sure that we get the people that uh, are looking for jobs connected with employers that uh, need them. Hi, uh, Premier. <clears throat> we got some data from the health ministry that shows that the hallway medicine problem, uh, hallway health care, overcrowding in hospitals isn't just something that happens occasionally during flu season, but it's going on every single day mm -hmm. in dozens of hospitals all across the province. Mm -hmm. Your government's been in power for a year and a half now. Uh, why haven't you made more progress on your promise to end hallway health care? I think we've made tremendous uh, progress, and I appreciate uh, your, your comments. Uh, we put, uh, we've increased health care by $1.9 billion, more than any government in the history of Ontario. We're working on a daily basis making sure we're working with hospitals, coming up with systems and, and funding to end hallway health care. One part of hallway health care is mental health. We're putting $3.8 billion, uh, 1.9 from the feds, 1.9 from us, to uh, end hallway health care. And we're working hard and we're going to continue looking at lean systems. I talked to the folks over at McKenzie and they told me that they're chipping away, they're down to about half an hour wait times and obviously it, it you know fluctuates but they said they're about a half an hour we're going to implement that right across the the province we're doing everything we can to fix the mess the absolute mess the previous liberal government gave us and if you look at health it's a, a million different moving parts over 63 billion dollar budget and uh, the difference between us and the previous government we're actually working with the frontline doctors frontline nurses and uh, they're coming up with solutions to support us and we appreciate all their support okay and if i can follow up uh, premier the evidence is showing that actually it, there hasn't been much progress made at all. The overcrowding is really uh, serious in a lot of places, including right here in Peel Region. Mm -hmm. uh, Brampton Mayor uh, Brown and Council declared a health care emergency. Yep. You know, I'd like to hear from you a uh, response uh, to their call for saying that Br Brampton's health care system is in dire need of funding and support from the provincial government. And if uh, Mayor Brown can uh, comment as well about what kind of uh, response you've actually truly been getting from yeah, the provincial well, government. Well, uh, the true response, as, as you were saying, is we've invested over $70 million in infrastructure at William Mosler. Now keep in mind, we've been in power 18 months. This just didn't happen overnight. This happened over 15 years of mismanagement from the previous Liberal government. We're putting the resources in. We're doing everything we can to clean up uh, hallway health care, and we are putting uh, a dent in it. We're, we're putting in, I believe, uh, it's close to $27 billion over the next 10 years in building new hospitals 
and uh, making sure that we have the, the support uh, for the hospitals and regions, be it Peel. And uh, yes, uh, we, we will uh, support a, a hospital in Brampton. Uh, but again, you're looking at uh, regions, 444 different regions, all wanting money uh, for health care. And we're doing our very best to support everyone right across on Ontario. And uh, one of our, our top priorities, obviously, is, is here in, in Peel. I have, a, I have two pages I could read off of all the funding that we've supported Peel and mental health and other areas, but I'd be here for another 10 minutes reading it off here. Sorry. Um, just, uh, just briefly, I, I, uh, thanks to the Premier for the opportunity to discuss this before. We had a, a meeting prior to this announcement. The, the, the fact that they're here, they're listening, they're talking about it is, is a good signal. Um, as the Premier said, uh, they're, they're, they're going to support uh, um, a Brampton hospital. I take those very encouraging uh, words. And I would note, I, I recognize the fact that the crisis we're in it wasn't created in a year, uh, that this has been um, a crisis that has emerged over the last 15 to 20 years. Um, and uh, the fact that we're at the table talking to the Premier directly about it, uh, um, when only two days ago, you know, we had our physicians and patients come forward with a plea for help, the fact that we're at the table so quickly is encouraging. Thank you, guys. Sorry, we have no questions. Thank you. 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 Thank you